Hello everyone, welcome to Code Enzyme and in this video I wanted to discuss the Joseph's problem. So we will be analyzing it mathematically and by the end of this video you will be able to solve problems like uh, uh, given an n you have to find the winner for k equal to 2 uh, for the kth person removed uh, you want to find the kth person removed for k equal to 2 and we want to also find the Joseph's permutation for a general k in big O of n log n time. And there is a bonus problem like you um, we want to solve the above three problems such that for every person they have l lives so every person can take l hits and then we want to solve for the above problems and i will not discuss the answer to this problem if you have the solution you can write there, write it in the comments okay now first thing first what is the joseph's problem uh, there are n people standing in a circle waiting to be executed and the counting out begins at some point in the circle and proceeds around the circle in a fixed direction. In each step, a certain number of people are skipped and the next person is executed. The elimination proceeds around the circle, uh, which is becoming smaller and smaller as the people are executed and until the last person who remains who is given freedom. So like, okay, uh, let's see this with an example. Like, okay, so let's say we have for n equal to 10. Uh, so we have 10 people standing in the circle, right? So my circle is something like, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So currently one has the uh, gun. So he will kill, let's say we are doing this for k equal to 2 right now. So he will kill 2 and pass it to 3. Then 4 will be killed. Then 4 will be killed and the gun will pass to 5 then 6 right and then the uh, uh, gun will pass to 7 then 8 will be killed then 9 then 10 will be killed and then again the gun is passed to 1 okay now now 1 will kill 3 and it will be passed to 5 so 3 is gone now it is passed to 5 now it is uh, like now 5 will kill 7 and the gun is passed to 9 and 9 will kill 1 and gun is passed to 5 and then 5 will kill 9 uh, so the winner here is 5 so for any given n we want to find this who is the winner so for I can say if my j n denotes the winner then I can say j of 10 is equals to 5 Right. Okay. So now if you want to solve this problem, like uh, let's first try to see what is the general case. Like if you have some n and we want, we would try calculating j of n brute force by hand. Then I can say, okay, if there is only one member, then one will be the winner. If there are two, then one will simply kill two. Then only there is one winner. Uh, one will win. If there are three, then okay, one, two, three. So 1 will kill 2, pass it to 3 and 3 will kill 1 again. So 3 is the winner for this case. Then you can try for 4, uh, 1 will win. For 5, like uh, for 5, uh, 3 will win and for 6, we have uh, the winner as 5. I mean, you can try it by hand and these will be the winner values. Now, one thing we can notice is that Jn is always odd. Now Jn is always odd because uh, in the first round all the even members will be eliminated. So I can actually divide that okay once uh, divide the cases like like when n is even and when n is odd right. So let's say we have two n elements. Let uh, we have two n elements. So currently we have something like 1, 2, 3 till which goes on to uh, I think uh, we can say 2n uh, 2n minus 1 then 2n okay and after the first round like when uh, all the even members will be eliminated so I can say it reduces to 1, 3, 5 and it goes on till uh, uh, 2n minus 1 right because the 2n will be eliminated. 
and if we had n elements it was it was something like one two three and the circle goes around it so what can i say from this like this is a circle of n elements after my first round this is a circle of n elements and this and the gun is back to one and if i was starting with n elements the gun was one and i had these numbers right so i can say every number is multiplied by two and minus one like two uh, two into two is four minus one three three into two is six minus one is five so i can say from this i can say if my uh, j uh, of two n is equal to two times j of n minus one like every number is multiplied by two and minus one so i can say this case and let's also consider a case when uh, we have odd numbers so we have uh, n equals to let's say 2n uh, minus 1 or plus 1 what should i take so let's take plus 1 okay mm, so if we have odd numbers like okay 1 2 3 and it goes on till 2n and 2n plus 1 so in this case after the first round uh, the gun will be passed to 2n plus 1 and 1 will die so in the end we have a circle of n elements so 3 we will have 3 5 7 and so on till 2n plus 1 and if i write that again 1 2 3 4 until the n element circle if we were starting with it i can see that every number is multiplied by 2 and plus 1 like 2 into 2 plus 1 3 into 2 plus 1 and so on so from this i can say j of 2n plus 1 is equals to j of uh, is actually equals to 2 times j of n plus 1 and now i can combine these two equations and say okay my final solution will be equal to let's say j of 1 equals to 1 and j of 2n is equals to uh, 2 times j of n minus 1 and j of 2n plus 1 is equals to 2 times j of n plus 1 and this solution works in big O of log n time right so it is pretty efficient and now if you want to find a closed form solution like uh, i think this is actually pretty efficient but if you want to go a bit more deeper then let's say we want to find the closed form of the solution so closed form now for this let's say uh, let's just try to find some values for the uh, j of n so what can I say? Let's say if this is my uh, uh, the function for n equal to 1 we return 1 and if it is odd then we return this and that. So if I try to print the values of the winner what we can observe here is uh, let me zoom in a bit. Okay. So what we can observe here like uh, 1 is, is a power of 2 and the winner is 1. Okay. 2 is a power of 2 and the winner is 1. Then 4 is also a power of 2 and the winner is 1. 8 is a power of 2 and the winner is 1 then 16 is a power of 2 and the winner is 1 and similarly it goes on for 32 also so one thing we can observe is that okay uh, j of 2 to the power m is equals to 1 right and if you see like okay if this is one block 4 to 7 is another block and 8 to 16 15 is another block then we can see that our answer is increasing by 2 like in this block from 1 uh, in this block from 1 we went to 3 in this block we went to 1 3 5 7 like uh, the answer is increasing by 2 for this block and for this block the answer is increasing by 2 actually 1 3 5 7 9 11 13 15 right and when we start with a new block uh, then the answer is also increasing by 2 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15 and so on. So now what I can say is that okay if my uh, uh, now from this pattern I can say j of 2 to the power m plus l is actually equals to 2l plus 1. 
from just from observing this pattern now i also need to prove this like okay uh, this is just a pattern but uh, how can i prove it like uh, this is working and it will always work for any value of nnm so what do we have as a working solution like if i want to try to prove this uh how can i prove it like let's say if my l is even if my l is even then this whole thing is even 2 to the power m plus l so 2 to the power m plus l is even right then i can say j of 2 to the power m plus l is equals to now from this recursive recursive solution that we solved here i can say the, equal to this equation right so i can say two times j of uh, j of what i mean i'm using i'm i'm trying to prove this using induction so 2 to the power m minus 1 plus l by 2 and minus 1 right now this is equals to and if i do uh, apply the same formula here two times 2l plus 1 so 2 into l by 2 plus 1 minus 1 so this is equals to 2l 2l plus 2 minus 1 which is equals to 2l plus 1 so lh is equal to rhs and now we have proved that okay uh, the solution works so what we can do is we can try to find the uh, greatest power of 2 which is less than m take mod with it and the answer is simply 2n plus 1 so this also works in big O of log 2n time right so now you can solve for uh, a winner in log 2n time now what else can we do like uh, suppose uh, we want to now this solution is actually uh, now suppose for some general k like general n and k actually you can solve this in k log n time if you uh, try to do this using uh, follow the same steps you will come up with a general solution in k log n time and there is also a recursive formula like you can try to prove it yourself now so if i have some general n and k this is simply equals to n n comma uh, n minus 1 uh, k plus n uh, plus k mod modulo of n so you can have your time trying to prove this uh, basically just follow the same steps and you will arrive at here okay now now we have this uh, can we try to find out the Josephus permutation like what were the three problems first we had the uh, we, we wanted to find the winner and I think now you can try to find out the answer for k. Uh, try to find this yourself. Like if my k is less than n by 2, then the answer is simply that. Otherwise, I can solve the problem recursively, right? And now the problem is we want to find the Josephs permutation. And I think I will actually show you the code for this one because uh, there is no point in uh, wasting any time. So we have this problem here, like we, you are given n and k and we want to find the kth removed. So for that, uh, if my n is 1, obviously the answer is 1 and if it is less than n plus 1 by 2, then uh, I mean, this is the recursive solution. You can try to understand it yourself now. So, okay. Uh, and now if you want to find the Josephus permutation. Now, uh, like obviously you can do this in big O of n square, but uh, uh, sometimes you want to do it in big O of n. So what we can do is we can create a, like if there are two ways to solve the Josephus permutation. So we want to actually, uh, it is easy to solve this in big O of n square, but we want to do better and we want to solve this in big O of n log n. Right. Uh, and when you try to solve this in big O of n, and if you want to try, like, why is this taking big O of n square time in the first place? 
like if i am creating a linked list like let's say one is linked to two then three then four then five six seven eight and nine okay uh, let's say for some k equals to three so if i'm currently at this position then i have to call my next pointer one by one uh, till k times right so i have n into k times i have to call this part, uh, call this uh, uh, next uh, next method and then i have to delete in big o of 1 uh, so that will cause me an n into k complexity which is big o of n square now what can we do <coughs> now what we can do is we can try to reduce this time of uh, uh, going to the next uh, next k pointer like if i am at 1 and i ask you what is the element after k uh, what is the element after k k elements after this like I, if i'm at 1 i i'm asking you that in my data structure what is my uh, what is the element if i'm index 1 what is the element at index 4 so i should be able to uh, go from here to here in big o of 1 or big o of log n time So I should be able to do this in big of one or big of log n time, and this is actually can be very easily uh, implemented. You can using something called an ordered static trees, and there are uh, various uh, popular implementations. One is using the Fenwick trees, and the other is using the ordered set. Or I should say red black trees. So if you are a C++ coder, you can use the policy based data structures to implement this and your code will be very short. So I will just um, and there is also there are also some other ways like obviously there is some way using the binary trees, the binary count trees, something called binary count trees. But uh, in every implementation what we are trying to do is we are trying to find the next kth element in log n time this is the main thing so i'll just show you the implementations uh, like if you are trying to solve the joseph's problem uh, let's just uh, go to the joseph's problem too because joseph's problem 1 is for k equal to 2 and it can be i mean the same code will work just put k equal to 2 there and it will pass so if you are like one way is to using the Fenwick trees. Okay, there I will just show you the Fenwick tree way for now. Yeah. So this is my implementation for the order static trees. And so we have the kth smallest element and all. So first we you take the input and we when uh, we remove the nth element and then keep taking mod with it like uh, the number of elements currently that I have and like that so it is actually a very a simple implementation it is just that you have to implement an order static trees using the Fenwick trees and if you try to code this yourself you will understand it uh, very easily okay, and there is one more implementation using the policy based data structures so you can use something called red black trees in C++ and your code size uh, reduces further so you can first in, uh, uh, insert all the elements from 1 to n and while there are some elements present you can find the r uh, current pointer plus kth element and take this uh, take the mod every time you are removing the element so i think you were able to understand this and if you learned something kindly like this video and subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys next time thank you